Artie Davis came from the silent era. He w had worked on Crazy Cat, and I think he even worked on uh, uh, Coco the Clown and all that kind of stuff for Max Fleisch in New York. He goes clean back to the 1920s. I knew him before I was in the cartoon business because he lived in the same apartment building with his father that I did. And I'd always talk to him and, and kid around with him, but we never discussed cartoons. I think he first came as an animator and then he became a director. And he directed some nice cartoons. What up, Doc? When Bob Clampett left the studio in 1945, Art Davis was given his unit to make cartoons in, be the director in. I think Art Davis is worth remembering, worth looking at again, because simply because he made some very funny cartoons, particularly when he was working with that Bill Scott and Lloyd Turner running stories for him. He made uh, some cartoons that are among the funniest Warner Brothers cartoons ever made. What Makes Daffy Duck comes to mind immediately. They have a lot of the same vitality, a lot of the same uh, energy that you have in the, the best Clampett cartoons, for example. Here you are, kiddo. He made a great series of cartoons. He's sort of the cult director at, uh, at Warner Brothers. Uh, a lot of the fans love the Art Davis cartoons because they are completely crazy in a way that Clampets weren't. They're almost in their own little universe. When, when uh, Art Davis did Sylvester, it was his own strange Sylvester. The vitamins? Well, how do you get vitamins? When Art Davis did Pepe Le Pew, believe it or not, he did. Uh, it's his own strange Pepe Le Pew. He even did one Bugs Bunny cartoon, and it's not like any of the others. One of my favorite Davises is Do Re Meow which uh, just features a parrot and a really dumb cat named Heathcliff. Louie is my friend, yes sir, my best little pal. He did a uh, wonderful cartoon, uh, one of my favorites called Catch as Cats Can, which is Sylvester and this Bing Crosby kind of parrot. Look, Junior, how many times have I told you to button up your tonsils? And there's a Frank Sinatra uh, a canary. And then the, he's got the Sinatra and Crosby feud going on, and Sylvester's all mixed up in it. First of all, he had a great sense of energy in his cartoons. The characters really moved around a lot, and he, he had some great animators on them, like Bill Melendez, and he had Emery Hawkins. He had some really, really terrific animators. And it wasn't the same as Clampett's. Farewell, stupid. A little more toned down than Clampett's, um, but he could get a little more character out of it. You know, you can always look at an Art Davis scene and there's gonna be drawings in it that make you laugh. Um, so I think he had a huge contribution for the studio. Warner Brothers decided to uh, cut down the amount of units. They had four units of directors going and uh, last guy in was first guy out and that was Art Davis. Uh, so they cut his unit completely and Freeling recognized what a great animator he was and uh, thought he could be very valuable to him and asked him if he would stay. I done a bad thing. He stayed with uh, Frizz Freeling for, for many, many years as one of his top uh, animators. Later when uh, Frizz Freeling started the, the Patty Freeling studio, Art Davis got a chance to direct cartoons again with the Pink Panther. Because his unit was so short-lived before he was shut down, he doesn't get the recognition he deserves. You take, say, the best three or four R. Davis cartoons, stack them up against the best cartoons of the other directors, uh, and you have, you know, he comes off very well. If, if a man is being going to be judged by his very best work, uh, then R. Davis does very well indeed. These directors shouldn't be forgotten. They all contributed a piece to the greatness of what Warner Brothers cartoons are and how we remember them today. We all have great moments we remember from from many, many different cartoons. And a lot of these great moments are in the cartoons made by these unsung directors. They were important. They were creating work at the time that contributed to the overall feeling of what a Warner's cartoon was. And I think that's really their legacy more than anything else. They were there, and they have a body of work that's just as vital as the guys who became more famous.